of under your chairmanship, Sir Graham. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I apologise, I'm chairing a bill upstairs, so I can't stay at the end of this debate. I do apologise. Now, we've recently seen MPs who want even wider laws on abortion hijack the government's public order bill to introduce um, buffers or, or censorship zones which aim to restrict fundamental freedoms of speech and expression against people's human rights. This would deny and criminalise those volunteers who offer support to women going to abortion clinics who don't really want to have an abortion, but are forced to, perhaps by abusive partners. We now have apparently some MPs, many of the same MPs, looking to hijack the government's Bill of Rights, also on abortion. The government is bringing forward this Bill of Rights as it seeks to remedy one of the worst mistakes of, the, of previous governments, namely the undemocratic reach of European human rights laws. The Bill of Rights is intended to deal with situations like illegal cross-channel migrants using human rights laws to evade justice, or terrorists hiding behind laws that were never meant to shield them from justice and scrutiny the way that they have. The Bill, which was in the manifesto that I and my colleagues on my side of the room stood on in 2019, would give supremacy to the UK Supreme Court. That's all it does. And make it explicit that courts in this country can disregard rulings from the European Court of Human Rights. And by the way, those who favour uh, more abortion should note that actually in practice, uh, whatever may be the letter of the law, in practice we have one of the most liberal abortion rights in Europe. I wonder just how many of them actually, I wonder how many of them actually would like to be under the control of the European Court of Human Rights, where many other countries in Europe have far more restrictive abortion laws. So I think they may be shooting themselves in the foot. I'll give away briefly, yes. Thank you very much. I thank the, the Honourable Member for giving way. But I would just like to say that for many of us, for many women, it is not about what happens anywhere else in the world. It is about protecting a right, not for us personally, because many of us would not, we don't think, have an abortion ourselves, but protecting the ability of other women, of young women, to make that decision if necessary and if they feel it's right. And the problem with having a Bill of Rights which doesn't include it is that it excludes that right from them. Well, the Honourable mentions a worry about what's happening in the rest of the world. and We've had a lot, heard a lot about the United States of America, but we're in an entirely different situation here. If, you, if anybody wants to change the effective right to abortion. They have to come to Parliament. Parliament is supreme uh, in this matter. So I, I'm not sure that women need to worry about what's happening in the United States. There's no way in which I or anybody else or anybody in any court of law in this country can restrict their rights to abortion, their effective rights. They have to come to Parliament. A bill has to be moved through Parliament. So it's disappointing that there are members, uh, apparently in this House, even those who do not support the intentions behind the Bill of Rights, that see this as yet another opportunity to hijack flagship government legislation to further weaken the few laws and safeguards there are in the law that govern abortion. It's up to members in this House to vote to change the law on abortion, which we have a perfect right to do. Those of us who think the sheer scale of abortions is a failure in how we treat women and how we value life at least know that this law was made by Parliament and so can be changed by Parliament. By making abortion a, quote, right, in contrast, the present laws would likely be enshrined and so would be beyond correcting, even when plainly needed. Now, let me give one widely accepted example. In, for instance, the law was changed in 1990 because the previous 28 weeks was considered too late a limit given the science on viability, had changed. Now science shows babies can survive at 22 weeks or earlier. And there are a lot of people who believe that the present limit of 24 weeks is therefore too high. In one ward of a hospital, it's possible for an abortion to be taking place. And the next ward, huge amounts of public resources, quite rightly, are being used to save a baby of 22 weeks gestation. But if a right were enshrined, the necessary change to stop the practice of late-term abortions would likely not be possible. And we've also had the very interesting point made by our honourable friend about gender selection. How would this be dealt with by Parliament in a Bill of Rights? The trouble with this sort of legislation 
is you can't frame legislation to cover every eventuality in a Bill of Rights. Much better that Parliament considers every practice, every change of a law, every advance of science on its merits. Yes. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way. Would he agree with me, the hijacking of bills just makes bad law, because in Northern Ireland we have seen just that, where the law has been hijacked, and we now have uh, a change from life-affirming laws, which the people of Northern Ireland support, to some of the most liberal abortion laws in all of Europe? I think, yes, I agree with the Honourable Lady. I think it's, very de it's a very dangerous parliamentary and legal practice to try and achieve your aims by piggybacking those aims on a bill which is designed to deal with a completely different eventuality. The laws it stands effectively allows abortion on demand. We know that. We have a record 200,000 plus abortions per year, perhaps one in four in this country. That can be beyond doubt. And in reality, every woman who wants to have an abortion can obtain one. We do not need to include it in a bit of rights. Instead, we need to look at how the state has failed so many women that they feel abortion is the only option available to them, and to look at alternative modes of support. There is no real appetite to make it a right, aside from a vocal minority and various lobby groups, including the abortion providers themselves. A right to abortion would be a very strange thing indeed. The only right that we would regret using and the only right we would ideally, actively seek to minimise. Nobody thinks that abortion is a good thing and they want more abortions. They may think it's necessary in certain circumstances, but it's not the sort of right we want to extend. This is a, it's contrast to other fundamental rights. So let's look at them. Freedom of speech, for instance, Association, privacy, to name a few fundamental rights, which we do not seek to minimise, but which we cherish and value, and which we want to enframe in a Bill of Rights. I hope colleagues who want to drag this bill to a very different place rethink their plans. I was about to finish, but I'll give one more time. Thank you, Gentle, for giving way. That's very generous of him. I just wonder if he could clarify for me. He talks there passionately about the human right of freedom of speech. I agree with him. I feel very strongly about defending it. And I notice that this Bill of Rights talks about doing that and protecting it from interference. Can he explain to us what the difference would be in interfering in somebody's womb, which is what the human right to have an abortion would be? Why is it that this legislation is right to protect one right, but not another right? And why is it right this legislation would bring in the judges and give the direction to the courts on one issue, but not another? Well, that's an interesting point. But is the freedom to have, say, an abortion at 24 weeks rather than 22 weeks, the kind of fundamental right that we believe should be protected yes. in a, yes. bill, a bill of rights. Yes. Uh, I mean, yes. the, the, this, is, this is a matter for argument, isn't it? Yes. A, a, a bill of rights is an unbelievably blunt instrument to deal with this particular sensitive issue. And I do say to the Honourable Lady that if she is, or if any of us are dissatisfied with this law, and there are probably more on this side of the House who are dissatisfied with this present law than there are on the other side of the House, at least we have to come to Parliament. We have to convince our colleagues to change the law. And I don't believe, and I think many other people don't believe, that the Bill of Rights is the right way to do it. Yeah. Hello, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sir Graham. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship this afternoon.